you look at all the intangibles, the makeup, when the guy's getting scouted, Justice checked all those boxes. I was just doing all these great things at one time, and then boom. You got the opportunity of your life right here, and you're gonna ruin it. You know, definitely not a moment I'm proud of, but thankful that I learned from it. There is a beginning to every journey. A place that shapes us. A place that defines us. A place that will always be a part of us. For Justice Sheffield, his quest into the beautiful game of baseball began in the quiet town of Tullahoma, Tennessee. Since he was able to walk, we'd get out there throwing the ball around from the yard, you know, our baseball field. I remember a long time ago, me and my mom were outside and she was throwing me uh, pot flies and I missed it and it hit me in my mouth. And for some reason that always sticks in my memory, probably because it, it, it hit me right on the head, you know. <laughs> Before we paved the uh, the driveway, we had rocks, and we just sit out there with a metal bat all day and just throw rocks, just ding, 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 hit them, see how far it could hit them and stuff like that. Yeah, we used to always be outside, me and my brother, if not all of us, you know, throwing the baseball or playing wolf ball in, in the front yard. Growing up, the bond between Justice and his brother Jordan was unbreakable. Justice idolized and emulated him, and through the years, both have come to truly appreciate the significance of sibling love. They were close in the fact that they worked very well together. They helped each other, they coached each other. Well, I think he and Jordan being so close in age that they motivated each other. They've always been very competitive against each other, but it's been a healthy competitive. Fights constant, I mean, about everything. Man, he was a little brother, I'll tell you that, you know what I mean? He was always trying to look up to me and, you know, trying to be better than me. And that competitiveness that we had growing up was just something that, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids growing up, they don't have. Two peas in a pod, we were together all the time. It was always competitive, either playing the game, we were outside playing. No matter what age group we were in, he always played up with my class and my friends and stuff. And, you know, that's, that only made him better. To have that together and the relationship that they had, they were just synonymous with each other, you know? and. Everybody feared the Sheffield boys. As Justice began his ascent into high school ball, he knew he had something to prove. Though his skills were advanced, the invitation to varsity had to be earned. You know, I wasn't really expecting much. I just knew that I wanted to go out there and you know, showing that I could play in the outfield, I could pitch, you know, do the same things that those guys are doing. Here at Tullahoma, you know, we value baseball. And to play as a freshman in varsity, it's huge. We took a trip to Knoxville to play the most dominant team in Tennessee baseball, which is Farragut High School. And that's where we called Justice up, if you will, and he got to make his debut in center field. It was my first time starting on varsity, so I was already nervous before the game. I made a sick diving catch, and I couldn't even believe I made the play. I don't think half the people could believe that I made the play. And then uh, the rest is, you know, history from there. With its name penciled into the varsity lineup alongside Jordan's, the Sheffield boys were back together. It was like Little League all over again. But playing in his older brother's shadow wasn't always easy to do. Justice was a freshman, we were indoors. We were using a pitching machine where you could only use a certain type of baseball. Jordan's feeding Justice, and that was probably a mistake. He tries to say that he didn't mean to pick up the squishy ball, but you're not supposed to, everyone knows that. I put one of the other balls that you ain't supposed to put in there, and it shot differently. I mean, this thing spit out the nastiest thing and just squares me up. They're coming together. I think it kind of shocked Coach White. He's thinking, oh my gosh, you know, they're about to fight. So me being his brother and all, you know, we just started going at it. And I look at their daddy, Travis, and I said, what do we do? Just let it play itself out. As long as no arms get broken, let them have at it. So I said, all right, that's the deal. I think the whole team, they saw the, the, the fire injustice, like, you know, I'm not just little brother, you know, you're not going to keep treating me like I'm little brother. After that, Justice began to carve his own path. 
He was fueled and he was driven. It was time for the world to see the real Justice Sheffield. That's when I started working out, quit football, quit basketball, just started focusing on baseball, working harder. He was a competitor, and that's the thing that stuck out about him was how competitive he was. But he had to be, growing up in the house he did with a big brother who was so talented. You just had that savvy and that, that it factor. This wasn't a kid that was out there trying to light up a radar gun even though he could. It was a boxing match for him. Uh, I'm going after you and I'm going to shut you down. You'll have other athletes that'll have the same skill set as him, but his mentality and how he elevates his teammates and people around him, that's what sets him apart. Give that kid the ball and get out of the way. Justice put himself on the map with his impressive high school career. His stats were off the charts, which, unbeknownst to him, created national buzz. The day before the draft, my dad wakes me up. We go to the high school, tells me we have an interview with MLB Network about the draft. So I get there and Chot Nix is just sitting down in the chair. He just starts asking me questions about the Gatorade Player of the Year. What would I think if I won the National Player of the Year? And then I started giving him an answer and mid-answer, she comes over with the trophy. And I mean, I couldn't even believe it. Like I was just, it, it was incredible. My family came out. I was so happy for him. Just to see like his smile and how bright everything was that day. That was just totally out of this world. It was just unreal actually. So proud of him to be able to get recognized at that level. I had to give a speech which was <laughs> terrible. I was terrified. I've never been more terrified in my life. It was incredible though. It was probably one of my biggest accomplishments I've had in my career. The draft, one of the most exciting, nerve-wracking, and life-changing moments in a young athlete's life. I remember sitting on my phone in the airport, and all I had was a ticker. So I was just watching it tick, tick, tick through. We were sitting over at my daughter's house, and we were just on pins and needles, you know. I remember tuning in and just thinking, you know, hey, one of my guys is about to be a first-rounder, hopefully. His nervousness is making us crazy. You know, guys' names are coming off the board, and the lower and lower it goes, like, the more sweat starts coming, the more hot you get. But when he heard his name called by the Indians, he could have jumped out of the ceiling. I sometimes I don't hardly believe it. It's very gratifying when you see a, a kid who's played for you, one of your kids, get that, you're just extremely happy for them. But less than a year into his professional career, Justice put his future in jeopardy when he was arrested in Tullahoma. Sheffield was charged with trespassing and underage drinking. I wanted to kill him, literally. I wanted to kill him. When that happened that year, there was a sense of, you know, disappointment. You know, I just got drafted, just won the award. I mean, I was just doing all these great things at one time, and then boom. I felt I had let down my family. I felt I let down my friends. I felt I let down my community. And I felt like I let down myself. For like two or three months, he never come out of his room. Just to see the effect that it had on him, it hurt us. He came to me and he said, Coach, how do you feel about me you know, working out here? And I said, Justice. I said, you're always welcome here. I said, we love you. I just wanted him to know that, hey, you know, obviously you made a mistake, but, you know, we all do. You know, part of me, obviously I wish it never happened. I really do. But then again, part of me is kind of glad that it did because it was a real eye-opener. You know, definitely not a moment I'm proud of, but thankful that I learned from it and overcame it and just got past it. And I think it's pushed him, made him a better person. I'm just real proud of the way he conducted himself in light of all that. Sheffield put the incident behind him and never looked back, willing himself to march forward. In 2016, Justice was traded to the New York Yankees and dug his cleats into the top of their farm system. It has been a long road for Justice, and his support system has been there every step of the way. 
You know, he can, he can go anywhere in this world. If he puts his mind to it, he'll be able to go you know, places beyond baseball. When he was drafted, they said, you know, he's a number three, four type starter. He's going to prove them wrong. You set things in front of him, obstacles, and he just seems to overcome any of them. Just knowing the journey, being able to be a part of that, you know, I myself feel very blessed. For him to be able to live out his dream and do something he loves, it's pretty amazing. I'm so proud of him because he's turned out to be a super wonderful grandson. Oh, I'm very proud of him. I'm very proud of him. He knows what he wants and he's going after it. You know, my grandparents, my parents, they've traveled the world. They've spent all this money for me to be able to do what I needed to do to be successful and, you know, live out my dream. And I can never repay them for what they have done for me. No one is perfect. We all have our cuts, scrapes, bruises, and scars. But that's what makes us who we are. We learn to embrace our accomplishments and grow from our mistakes. Tullahoma, Tennessee was, is, and will always be a guiding light for Justice Sheffield's journey to stardom.